Hello, today we have Paul Mann, CEO of ASP Isotopes, trading on the NASDAQ under the ticker ASPI. Paul, welcome back. Thank you for having me. Great to be back. For viewers unfamiliar with ASP Isotopes, Paul, please let us start with a brief overview of your company and what makes it unique in the global market for critical isotopes. Yeah, so, so ASP Isotopes is the company that, that has built three manufacturing plants in South Africa to produce uh, stable isotopes that can go into many different industries, including advanced semiconductors for quantum computing and artificial intelligence, uh, can go into nuclear medicine, uh, and also into the nuclear fuel supply chain as well. Uh, this industry has had significant supply side challenges during the last several decades. It's particularly challenged right now. And so our goal is to solve a lot of these supply chain problems to enable many of the technologies of the future. Now, Paul, ASP Isotopes recently has entered into a term sheet with Terra Power for the construction of a HALU production facility. Can you elaborate on the big strategic importance of this partnership? Yeah, thanks. So we actually signed two uh, term sheets recently, one with Terra Power and one with Nexa, the South African Nuclear Energy Corporation. And both were actually critical because these agreements will allow us to construct a, a nuclear fuel plant in South Africa to supply the world with much needed uh, nuclear fuel for next generation nuclear reactors. Um, the new, new, you know, there's a huge, huge growing need for more electricity and more energy in the world. And it's believed that the only real way to supply this energy is, is from small modular nuclear reactors that are the next generation of nuclear reactors. And all these nuclear reactors are reliant upon a particular type of fuel called high SA, low enriched uranium. And there is no Western producer of commercial quantities of that fuel. So, so, so the, the term sheet or the agreement with Terra Power combined with the agreement with Nexa will allow us to build a factory and supply this fuel for, for, for the world. Paul, construction of your Eterbium-176 enrichment facility was completed significantly ahead of schedule. Now, how does this achievement set the stage for ASP isotopes to meet the increasing demand for lutetium-177, especially considering its importance in oncology treatments? Yeah, so, so there's a new range of oncology treatments coming out, uh, radiotherapeutics, that require um, require radioisotopes as, as an active ingredient. And so, for example, Nuvartis' Provicto uh, requires lutetium-177. Um, and this lutetium-177 is generally produced from ytterbium-176. Now, there's a huge shortage of ytterbium-176. If you look back at the, Lutis the Provicto clinical trials, 5% of patients died because they couldn't make the drug. They couldn't get the active ingredient of the drug. There's been many um, articles and, and press news, news stories recently of these shortages of, of medical isotopes. So we've constructed the Eterbium-176 plant here in South Africa. It's our first plant that uses lasers or quantum enrichment uh, to, to, to provide the enrichment. And we're just in the commissioning stage right now. The commissioning is going really well. Um, we'd expect to have samples and commercial agreements with customers during the first half of the year. And I say we've got a lot of interest from this isotope from for both uh, drug companies as well as um, as well as radio pharmacies around the world. ASP Isotopes is now accelerating the construction of enrichment plants for nickel 64 and lithium 6 and 7. What are the expected timelines for commercial production of these isotopes and what kind of market opportunities do they present? Yeah, so yeah, you know, Eterbium 176 plant took 8 months to construct. Most of that was in the procurement We've just received the permission from South African government to build these plants in South Africa. So we started the procurement of the equipment for uh, for these plants. And so, you know, we'd hope to have these plants up and running by the end of 2025. And um, there's an urgent need for all three isotopes. Nickel 64 is currently used to make copper 64. The only supplier of nickel 64 in the marketplace is Rosatom, which is the Russian nuclear energy agency. There's a shortage of it. And lutetium-6 and lutetium-7 are both used in the nuclear fuel supply chain. And so you know, we've got a lot of interest in both all three isotopes from customers. And so the commercial opportunity could be quite significant. 
Paul, one of the things that is most attractive about ASP isotopes is the far-reaching applications that your technology appears to have across, for example, nuclear medicine, semiconductors, green energy. Now, looking forward, which sectors do you believe will be the primary drivers of growth for ASP isotopes? Yeah, so as you said, there's many different end markets for, for isotopes. And you know, the, the largest opportunity by a, a, a significant margin is clearly the nuclear fuel supply chain in terms of higher, say, low and rich uranium. The two customers we're talking to there collectively need about $37 billion of HALU over the next sort of 15 years or so. So clearly, the, the, the size of that market dwarfs everything else. But many of the medical isotopes and the, uh, the electronic isotopes can easily be in the tens to hundreds of millions of dollars each over the next sort of five, 10 years. So, you know, so some of them are pretty significant, pretty, pretty significant commercial, uh, com commercial opportunities. Now, Paul, here's your chance to look beyond me and speak directly to the investor. Why should investors take an interest in ASP isotopes right now? Well, so the ASP isotopes is, is we set it up to solve a number of the supply chain problems enable many of tomorrow's technologies, such as artificial intelligence, quantum computing, uh, nuclear fuels and nuclear medicine. And we, we spent the last three years building three manufacturing facilities in South Africa. All three are in the process of starting up right now. It's a very exciting time for the company. And, you know, we look forward to building many more plants in the future. And if we can get these plants up and running in a timely fashion, we should generate substantial returns for our shareholders. Paul, thanks again for telling us your great story. Thank you for your interest.